Saudi Arabia executes 81 in one day, breaking record in modern history. On March 12th, Saudi Arabia executed 81 men, including Yemeni, Syrian, and Saudi nationals on a variety of charges, including terrorism. I'm saying that word because of the YouTube algorithm and we just got our monetization back. Uh, and holding, quote unquote, deviant beliefs. A majority of these men belonged to the minority Shia Muslim community. The massive execution breaks the previous records of those executed in a single day when Saudi Arabia killed 47 people in 2016 and beheaded 37 prisoners in 2019. Amnesty International called the execution, quote, an appalling escalation in Saudi Arabia's youth use of the death penalty and stated in a report that Saudi Arabia had already killed 92 individuals in the first quarter of 2022 alone. Lynn Malouf, the deputy regional director for the Middle East and North Africa for Amnesty Amnesty International, said that most trials rely on forced confessions and, quote, extracted under torture or other ill treatment. Saudi Arabia denies all these accusations, claiming that it protects its country according to its laws. So one thing that I thought was very interesting, well, obviously this is horrible. Um, it should be noted that at this moment in time, um, we do not know how these men were executed um, because sometimes it's beheading, sometimes it isn't. Um, at this moment, this isn't known. And because obviously Saudi Arabia is not very transparent about their judicial system at all. And um, I was reading various reports about for um, different organizations that are, you know, watchdogs on the Saudi judicial system. And for the few cases that they were able to track these cases to some extent or track their judicial processes, um, basically every single case, there was a lack of due process or um, confessions or that were extracted under, under torture. Um, one thing that I think was very interesting and important to highlight that I haven't seen the media highlighting very much is out of the 81 men who were executed, 41 of them were Shias and were accused of, um, you know, belonging to illegal organizations, um, trying to smuggle weapons, um, and, and lots of other uh, associated crimes and charges regarding um trying to undermine Saudi Arabia in some way. Uh, in a lot of but interestingly enough, what many oftentimes this charge includes the charge of deviant beliefs. Armin, what is what is your thought on how the majority of these victims or those executed were Shia? I mean, I heard, I don't know if this is true, maybe Qasem could correct me in the live chat or music guy that Iran, the reason why the recent Iran-Saudi Arabia meeting was canceled was because of these executions, because of the heavy Shia That's crackdown. right. Wait, no. Dig, build, build that out for people who are not aware. So there was an effort between Saudi Arabia and Iran to normalize their relationships right now uh, and like reduce a little bit of a conflict. And there was a series of meetings that they were having just to just get a little bit closer, like maybe still be enemies, but like not be, let's be, be a little bit less aggressive against each other, maybe. Um, especially because of the, I think maybe Saudi Arabia is being pushed in that direction because of the Vienna talks and stuff like that. Maybe, I don't know what's happening behind the scene. Um, but then one of the, the latest rounds of the talks were canceled. And I think the impression by some people, and I don't know if this is correct, was Iran canceled it because of the anti-Shia crackdown in Saudi Arabia. Okay, so USSR 2 is saying false. It is due to Iran nuclear deal. No, the Iran nuclear deal is the reason why they were having, were trying, we're being... Okay, so the explanation is that those meetings started because of the Iran nuclear deal, right? Because the United States... If at some point the United States starts recognizing, um, you know, beginning more closer to the deal, it wouldn't be 
it would be too problematic for Saudi Arabia to constantly be having an aggressive behavior towards Iran, especially how easily uh, drones by Houthis could take Aramco sites, right? We just saw that, by the way. Didn't that just happen yesterday, by the way? Yeah. So we had there, a new I think series there's of, been two, at least two within the past two weeks. Houthis yeah, I mean, Saudi, after Arabia has, Saudi Arabia has realized that, you know, Big Daddy USA is not going to always be there to support them, and their oil facilities is extremely vulnerable to drones, right? Then no matter how many protective missiles they have, uh, drones apparently still can reach their oil facilities. They're like, okay, we <laughs> we need to be less aggressive, I guess, to Iran, I guess. Like you can't, it's hard, you know, it's very difficult for them, right? Um, so I think the the fact that United States is not is moving maybe to a point where they're not going to be as aggressive against Iran because they're trying to, I don't know if they're going to be able to pivot out of the Middle East so that the nuclear deals is pushing Saudi Arabia to towards trying to ease up tensions with United, with Iran. So you, it's the opposite of what you're saying, USSR 2.0 uh, in the live chat. Yeah. One so thing that. that is very important to highlight, um, I want to read you, um, a, a small excerpt from deathpenaltyinfo.org and then dig into it. So, quote, the executions came as Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman had been touting social reforms in the kingdom, including pledges by the Saudi government to end capital punishment for drug offenses and no longer executing juvenile offenders. Each time, the promises were followed by additional executions. Following the mass execution, Soraya Bowens, the de deputy director of the London-based human rights organization Reprieve, said, quote, If the world should know that when Mohammed bin Salman promises reform, bloodshed is bound to follow. And oh I think this God. is extremely important to highlight that yes. a lot of people are getting charmed and wooed and a little starry eyed by all the social reform happening in Saudi Arabia right now, including like Halloween concerts, music blasting, like more um, co-ed, like co-ed beaches, I think only for foreigners, but still like more mixing of the sexes, like, oh, and, and Mohammed bin uh, MBS's, um, uh, efforts to kind of reduce the authenticity of hadith in some way, you know, talking about the Mutawatir hadith, um, and how, how, you know, amazing that is and how quickly things are changing in Saudi Arabia. But you need to know that it's a show and that what will happen. Yeah. Like Rudresh is saying, these are a distraction and that activists who follow and watchdog for Saudi Arabia it's so predictable. It's so predictable that they know that when you're getting these social reforms that they can just say, there's going to be mass executions that follow because they're still coming in. The government is still coming in and saying, we can still lay down the hammer or the sword. So like get, if Mohammed, for granted. if Mohammed bin Salman comes to you and tells you like oh here here's a bieber concert like isn't this great isn't this ref like reforming like look bieber oh look women in skirts like hey women in skirts oh theater look we have movie theaters so your question was like how many people did you kill for this like what are you trying to like is there's blood there's always blood there's a blood that they're trying to clean up with these flashy you know women like it's amazing. Like when when they uh, said a woman will be able we will be able to drive. That was happening while they were torturing and imprisoning the woman activists who actually fought for that. Right? Then they said women can now join the army. They did that at the same time where they were executing and kidnapping a whole bunch of competitors to Mohammed bin Salman. But if you look at what happened with the news media, the fact that so many people were disappearing didn't get attention because, oh, women can join the army in the Saudi Arabia. Amazing. So this people now, now we have theaters in Saudi Arabia. That was exactly at the same time that they were doing some other human rights violations. So every time you're distracting by a Bieber concert or whatever they're having next, just remember that, that that's the point. They're doing something and they're trying to cover it, cover it up. But I think it's failing. Uh, I think it's uh, like I'm, I'm hoping that it's more and more is failing because now this 81, like this time, what what's the distraction this time? I don't know what this is, but 
This, I mean, I don't know. This didn't get that much attention. Like eighty-one. Maybe percent... Formula One ra- racing. Yeah, I don't know. But actually, how is it that eighty-one people being executed in Saudi Arabia? It didn't get that much international. How many people in the live chat have heard about this before we talked about it? Because this this happened a few. Oh, like I at least personally, I saw this everywhere. But you it's did? my okay. job to. Yeah, yeah, but people in the live chat. Did you guys hear this anywhere else? Like, or is this the first time you heard it? Because because if this was happening anywhere else, it would be just like huge news. Yeah, mm-hmm. FIFA or something. Yeah. Anyway, so don't guys let remember just remind everybody that every time you see Saudi Arabia doing something flashy or seemingly reforming, just remind people that people probably are screaming in pain in the background, and this is just trying to drown their noises out. That's the whole point of these. Okay, here's here's the the nude from the news from the street. Um, Secular Rarity is saying I hadn't effing heard about it, and I'm a news junkie. Bread of Life oh, wow. saying, I didn't hear about it. D is saying, this got attention from many major news sites. Which th- this is true. This got huge mainstream media attention that I was tracking. Grey Jedi is saying, I heard about it. Yes. AGA is also saying that she heard about it. Atheist on YouTube. Yes. Boop, boop. Yes. No Name is saying, this is the first time for me. Willfully is saying that they heard about it from Kyle Kluinski. Because you know yeah, how anti-Saudi Kyle, regime yeah. he is. This this we um, appreciate from Kyle. His anti We we just wish he was. Con- we wish that Kyle Kolinsky was consistent with his uh, uh, consistently yeah, yeah, yeah. had the same standards for the Islamic Republic of Iran that he has for Saudi Arabia. But you know, not. I think Kyle Kolinsky is the real secret Shia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. that, that's what we've missed this whole time. Um, yes. And Secular is saying this should have overwhelmed the news. Yes, it's absolutely insane. Um, One thing that I want to highlight really quickly, because I just personally found this fascinating. Okay, so this is really quick. Saudi Arabia applies Sharia or Islamic law as its national law. The country has no formal penal code. Saudi Arabia has no formal penal code. But the the government has passed some laws and regulations that subject certain broadly defined offenses to criminal penalties. In the absence of a written legal penal code or narrowly worded regulations, however, judges and prosecutors can convict people on a wide range of offenses under broad catch-all charges, such as break allegiance with the ruler and trying to distort the reputation of the kingdom. I didn't know that Saudi Arabia had no formal penal code. So you could, they could go willy-nilly and whatever they decide at any time? Yeah, that's the implication. Okay. Or that's obviously what they already do, have been doing for decades. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. That that was just a, like an interesting fact that blew my mind. All right, How do we you need have to no... Move. Yeah, anyways. Yeah, I, I, okay, is it that true? Like, I know this was true... A couple of years back, I don't know if it's still true. They also don't have a constitution. Their constitution is the Quran. Is the Quran? Yeah. I mean, like, what? <laughs> That's okay. probably why they have no formal penal code. I don't know if it's related. Well, I, actually, I don't know. Never mind. Yeah, and also, I just <laughs> said, maybe I didn't know about that either. Quit, quit dropping truth bombs on me. <laughs> AJ saying the hadith is the penal code. True, true. Um, but I mean, Mutawatar had these should be. I mean, actually, I don't know. These are political prisoners. These are these are people who are challenged them politically, not Islamically. So, yeah. Or who they uh, say challenge them politically. <clears throat> Allegedly. I mean, yeah. I mean, there I are mean, many cases they where people consider, are like, I they, don't even think they consider they any did. Shia. They consider any okay. Shia yeah, exactly. uh, as a, as an agent of Iran. That's what they consider them. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.